Hey peeps, we are back. We are talking The Real Housewives of Potomac, season eight, episode 11. Hey, before we get into the video, please do me the honors of subscribing to my channel, hitting the notification bell so you can always be notified when I post new content, hitting the thumbs up because that does wonders for my channel, and share. Thanks. So at the top of this episode, we find out that Ashley and Giselle are starting an athleisure line. And you know, I, I'm just gonna say that's a no for me. Okay, that is a no for me. First of all, I don't really love any of the stuff that Ashley wears. I think everything that she wears, in my opinion, looks cheap and just too tight, too short, too, just too much. I don't like anything that Giselle wears. It's, it's, it's as if she's playing a game of mashup. She just throws everything together. It just looks, I don't love it. I mean, and everybody knows that I have zero fashion sense, a zero fashion sense, but Lord, I, I just don't know. Anyway, they're gonna call it G and A. It's a no for me. Anyway, moving on. Karen has the cute little conversation with her aunt Val and you know they're talking about how she purchased a part of the family's land she's going to refurbish her grandmother's house and turn it into a beautiful bed and breakfast which I think is an amazing idea I love the fact that they are keeping this in the family um the house is 104 years old, which is a no-go for me. Those of you peeps who know me, you already know. I don't fool around when it comes to old properties because I am crazy. And I think that, you know, it's haunted. Finding out that this property used to be the plantation that their family were slaves on and the slave owner, you know, was having a little essay uh, on the property and creating family members. If you know what I'm saying, I'm trying to, to not just come right out and say it so that you two believe me alone, but they were able at some point to get the, the land and make it a part of their family with this being formerly slave owned. I also think it's haunted uh, for that reason. Um, her aunt Val lives on the property as well. And she says, I don't want you doing anything freaky on this property. And Karen is wondering what freaky is she talking about? And she says, I don't want you to have a nudist colony or something over here. I, no way in hell that I would ever think that Karen would, you know, set up a nudist colony. But she did say she was thinking about growing the marijuana. And I said, oh God, is this gonna be a repeat of last season or the season before that when they had the battle of the candles? Wendy's got candles, Karen has candles, then Mia had a candle, you know, Eddie's got happy Eddie legal marijuana, and now you're gonna have a marijuana farm. I just, you know, I don't want this mess. Mia and Robin go to some place called the Salt Sanctuary, and I don't know if we have anything like that around here where I'm from, but it did look extremely interesting. I mean, I probably would find myself in there reading a book or listening to a book on audio or playing some smooth jazz or something. No matter what I decide to do, I end up sleeping that place. But supposedly with all the salt, it helps clear your sinuses and respiratory tract. I think that's something I should tell my sister about. Anyway, Mia was telling Robin about Karen's event and how Karen had invited all the girls down to Surrey, but said that she wasn't allowing them all to go due to her insurance reasons. And she was going to put all their names in a fishbowl and pick out who could come. Now, listen, Mia irritates me sometimes, but Mia is hilarious. She really is. I thought that it was so funny how she was explaining the situation and Robin brings up something that was so odd. I said, you know what? This woman is really in lack of a storyline or she is very boring to me for some reason. She says uh, five years ago, Karen was showing her a picture of something in her phone and she's seen a picture of her her kids and her parents and now she thinks that Karen is obsessed with her. 
And I said, girl, are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? The only thing she's obsessed with is this ridiculous relationship with you and Juan. That's the only thing she's obsessed with. And not only that, at least somebody's obsessed with you because Juan clearly is not. Anyway, Mia asked her about therapy as a couple and she says, no, I said, I don't understand that. Is it the, you don't go to therapy because you're not a real couple? Because there is no way that Juan and Robin should not be in therapy. They at least need to go to therapy for this codependency that they have they are both dependent on each other way too damn much something is odd about their relationship and I just don't love it also when Mia was talking about her and Gordon possibly going through a divorce Robin was throwing low blows at Mia in the confessionals talking about you know Mia was a stripper when they met and you know she thought she was going to be living this life of luxury and now she's not what does that have to do with you? And it wasn't as if Mia was just sitting at home being a housewife. Mia was actually, I guess, working at these massage places. I mean, Juan is at home with no job for the last year or so. So really? Anyway, let me go and move on, get off Robin's back. So Eddie and Wendy meet up. They have a nice little dinner. They talk about her talk show. They talk about Eddie launching his weed business called Happy Eddie. Um, they thought that Wendy's mom might be upset about it, but she's not. She wants to know when's that money going to come rolling in. And I said, I don't know why they thought she was going to be upset. Any money making venture her mom is here for, because I still have not forgotten when she was telling them that they needed to pay for her plastic surgery for her mommy makeover. She just wants to know when she could expect her money for her surgery. Now, honey, listen, Karen and Ray on this day date is what Karen called it. So the waitress comes over and lets them know that it's happy hour. And Karen said, you better not order from that happy hour menu. You're going to go back to that main menu where the prices say I love my wife. She is not here for it. I laughed so hard because Ray was headed straight for the happy hour menu. I would just like to say, uh, I don't care how rich a person is. If it's happy hour and you see something on that thing that you like, please order it. That is ridiculous. She said, it says that you don't love your wife or you're too frugal. If you go back to that happy hour menu, she is hilarious. So she let Ray know that she had told the girls she was going to put all their names in a fishbowl and pick out which girls could go to Surrey. And she said, I only put in the names of the girls I was, you know, really wanted to go. And she said that was Ashley, Wendy, Candace, and Giselle. And when she said that, I said, ain't no way in hell. I said, you did not invite Robin and you did not invite NECA. She needs somebody that she can cuddle up with and hide. You know what I mean? There's no way. So when she sends out the text invites, Giselle replies back, thank you so much for the invite, but unfortunately I'm not gonna be able to make it. And I said, oh gosh, here we go. She's acting like a child. She is the victim again. This is all Wendy and Candace's fault. They hurt her, they attacked her, you know, not the other way around. Like she wasn't attacking their husbands and their relationships, their bodies, you know, their funds. She was just, you know, the victim. She didn't do anything. And what I really can't stand is how production helps out with that. Production keeps doing these flashbacks of Candace's reactions to their actions, but they never show Giselle or Robin's actions, what they did to cause Candace and Wendy to react this way. I think it really sucks that they do that. Then they head over to Neca's house and I said, oh. dear God. Not only do we have to be bothered with NECA, we have to be bothered with Giselle and Sharice, who shows up and they both pretend like they didn't know she was coming. So out of nowhere, you just happen to slide by a florist, grab a bunch of flowers and a bottle of champagne, and you happen to show up on filming day, fully mic'd up, ready to uh, hang out with Giselle and NECA, and nobody knew. No, ma'am. No, ma'am. No, ma'am. Anyway, when we get to NECA's house, her husband is frantically looking for his work ID. She is not helping. She refuses to help. She keeps telling him, just go to the hospital and ask for a new one. Do you know the process? I mean, I don't work for a hospital. But I work for a bank. And do you know the process that I have to go through when I lost my badge that one time? Jeez, I was so upset by it. Anyway, 
I think it's ridiculous. That man searched and searched. She finally found his damn badge. She didn't really care. Anyway, she tells Giselle that Karen gave her a tour of the town and told her her house was beautiful, but she lives in North Potomac. And, you know, Karen lives in South Potomac and Giselle says, well, you own and she rents. And you know what I said? I said, you know, Potomac is Potomac. They put the map up on the screen. It says Potomac and that y'all both live in Potomac. And it doesn't matter that she rents. I remember when Katie brought up that you rented. If looks could kill, Katie would have bled out on that damn couch. You got crap for your kitchen, right? For me, my house is a home with my girls. So, I mean, I don't... But you were also renting, so... Did you see her face? She was pissed. Girl, listen, it does not matter. The point is, is Neca, Sharice, who we don't give a shit about, and Karen are the only ones who live in Potomac. Okay, rather you are owner or renter. And the fact is, Karen's paying her rent. Mind your business. Anyway... When Sharice shows up, Giselle has to let Sharice know. Karen says she lives in North Potomac. Here's Sharice, but you own, right? Oh my gosh, she also owns the rights as a full-fledged housewife, and you don't. She needs to go with you. I'm just saying, anyway. Giselle lets them know that she has invited Candace and Wendy and Ashley and herself to Surrey. And she has turned down the invitation because she can't possibly ride in a sprinter van for all those hours with Candace and Wendy because she is concerned. She is scared. She doesn't feel safe. I just think that Giselle is doing too much. She is working so hard to be the victim here. You know, she's refusing to film with Wendy and Candace, but Wendy and Candace are not refusing to film with her. And they are the people that you harassed. You always do stuff to them. And then when they read you, all of a sudden, oh my gosh, I don't feel safe. She got death threats. Now listen, nobody deserves death threats. These fans out here sending death threats and stuff like that. You guys are disgusting. I mean, really, come on. But they didn't send you these death threats because Candace cussed you out. They sent them to you for what you did to Candace. Her and Robin do not like to take responsibility. And I hate that the show is helping them not take responsibility. I don't know. Giselle is one of those people that it's like, you're on this show every season. You deliver nothing every season, but you always get the first chair. I don't understand that. Clearly people on the show, by people, I mean Andy Cohen and the rest of production, absolutely love Giselle because they allow her to continue to be on this show season after season after season, not bringing anything. She gets first chair at every reunion and every reunion she gets read for filth and she just sits there because she's not quick with it. It's just ridiculous, I'm sick of it. Robin and Giselle are not the victims here. So Karen then sends a text message to every girl in the group inviting them to Surrey, saying that she has upped her insurance. Giselle and Neca both think that she invited all of the girls because Giselle said no. And I think so too. Karen on the Sprinter van said that's not why, but I think she's lying. She wanted Giselle to be there. As soon as Giselle said no, all of a sudden everybody was invited. I think that it was because she really did want Giselle to come. Giselle tells Neko, well, you can go, but just remember you're second class citizen. I think that's because Giselle didn't want Neko to go. So she told her that to try to make it seem like, girl, she ain't really want you to come. Don't go. You know what I mean? Neko went anyway. I think that Neko and the rest of the girls dressed up way too damn much to be going to Surrey. They really did. Surrey is a jeans and t-shirt kind of place. Anyway, they get on this Sprinter van and they're in this Sprinter van for hours. Karen says that she is really disappointed with Giselle because they are friends, they're in a good place, and she really wanted Giselle to go. Mia is clearly upset. She sends Karen a text message that says, I can't get over the original invite. Karen says, you need to. I screamed so hard. I said, oh my God, not you need to. Robin replies back and she says, hi, Karen, thank you for the invite. However, it is extremely last minute and I have committed to spending the day with my children and my nephews tomorrow. Travel safely. Karen responds, cool, Robin. 
then Mia sends her another text and she says, Karen, I don't do last minute urgent RSVP demands. Congratulations to you and yours. And Karen says, cool, Mia. Karen is so, she don't give a shit. One thing I did notice though, when Karen was texting Robin back, she said, cool, Robin. And when she typed in Robin's name, she typed in R-O-B-I-N. I said, Lord, <laughs> you just ridiculous, Karen. Anyway, so Wendy let the girls know that Eddie was going to be having this happy Eddie party, you know, to let everybody know about his new business. And she said that Eddie was going to be inviting everybody. Production asked her, was Eddie going to invite NECA and NECA's husband, Ike? And she played them off like, uh, are you crazy? Absolutely not. NECA then says that she's going to be having an unpacking party at her house and that everyone was invited. I have never been to an unpacking party. And I know that some of my friends listen to my videos. I'm telling you right now, don't even invite me. Mm -mm. If you want some help, just ask me to come over and help you unpack some stuff. I'm not coming over to somebody's unpacking party unless it's full of single men. Then I'll come over. Anyway, when she says that everybody's invited, Ashley leans over and tells Wendy, oh my gosh, you're invited. You're included. Wendy said, no, she skipped 20 million steps. Then Ashley lets everybody know that her and Giselle has started an athleisure line. TNA. You and Giselle? Yes. Uh, clean and close? Athleisure, bitch! Athleisure! Is this an April Fool's joke? <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> Whatever, <laughs> Wendy! The louder the cackle, the more they're bothered, okay? Do you see them get dressed every day? What? Wendy with her. <laughs> She's bothered. <laughs> you are mess, Wendy. Honey, now listen, I said the same thing, didn't you? We've seen them. I mean, no ma'am. I'm team Wendy here. And listen, listen, she is not hating on you. She does not give a damn, Ashley. Seriously, no, no. So when they go to Karen's place, it was really cute. They were introduced to Karen's family. They told him a little backstory on the family. There was a pastor there. He said a nice prayer. I would have had to wait out on the porch because I'm scared. It's haunted there. And um, wait, before they got there, they went to a gas station and Wendy was able to get some kind of gas station margarita. She said it was delicious. I've never been to a gas station that sells margaritas, but I'd like to. Anyway, they work out in the yard and... Karen is out there working out in the yard wearing some Chanel tennis shoes. I said, oh, hell no. No, 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 no. If I'm going to be out in that yard in some tennis shoes working in mud, those are getting some Walmart specials. $14.95. I'm telling you right now, listen, when I bought my house and I realized that I have to cut my own grass because I'm used to living in an apartment where they have maintenance people to do that. I said, well, you know what? I'm going to go right down here to the Walmarts. I went right down to Walmart and got me a pair of $15 tennis shoes. And those are the shoes that I use to cut the grass. Are you kidding me? I'm not going to put on my nice tennis shoes. They're just going to turn green. Anyway, I keep them in the garage, you know, by the lawnmower. Anyway, funny story. When I first bought this house, I was so used to living in apartments. You know, once I moved out of my parents' house and when I lived with my parents, my dad did all the stuff. But anyway... I always lived in apartments. So I bought this house and the first time it snowed, I went outside and I told my son, I said, oh my goodness, there's snow everywhere. I said, the driveway, the sidewalk. I said, well, who's gonna take care of this? And my son looked at me and he busted out laughing. He said, mom, I think we're supposed to take care of it. And I said, oh my gosh, we've, we've, we've got to shovel this? And he says, yes. I said, oh, Lord, listen, I ran right over to Menards because, you know, I like to save big money at Menards. I went right over to Menards, got a shovel, a whole bunch of salt and stuff. I think I got the wrong kind of shovel. I still have that shovel. I hate it. I'm going to get me a new one. Anyway, I'm just saying, I, you know, I don't know where I don't know how we got onto this. Anyway, um. How do, how do I keep doing stuff like this? Anyway, let me try to get back to where we were. Where was we? 
I don't know. The girls were wearing cute outfits, though. They were wearing some overalls while they were working in the yard. Anyway, they end up finishing up, you know, raking under the tree. And then they go over to Val's. That's Karen's aunt's. I'm talking like, you know, we're friends, Val's. Anyway, they go over to Aunt Val's house and they have a little lunch out in the yard. I guess Aunt Val said, y'all not bringing them cameras up in her house. Anyway, while they're out there, they're talking and laughing, you know, having a little kiki. And Ashley brings up the subject of Wendy and NECA again, which I wish people would just leave it alone. These are two grown people. Anyway, Wendy makes it very clear that she believes that this group is supposed to be a sisterhood. And anybody coming into the group should actually be a part of the sisterhood. And she doesn't think that NECA did that. She was very pissed off that NECA came in being extremely shady, calling her a bitch, calling her mom a witch, talking about her husband and bringing in her sister. And on this particular trip, and when Wendy and NECA was having that conversation, did anybody notice that NECA didn't have any of that energy? You know what I mean? She didn't bring any of that rah, rah, like she does when Giselle and Robin are around. Did anybody else notice that? She seemed to be calm and rational. She wasn't doing any of that negative behavior that she had before. I guess she needs a team in order to talk to Wendy crazy. NECA said that she called Wendy a bitch because Wendy cussed at her and they showed the flashback. NECA actually cussed at Wendy first. And then she called Wendy a bitch. Wendy tells her that she has skipped too many steps. Wendy believes that NECA owes her an apology. And I agree. But here's where I might differ from your opinion. I think that NECA owes Wendy an apology. But I also think that Wendy owes NECA an apology. I think that NECA is responsible for 85% of this mess. And Wendy's responsible for the rest. Both of them are two very educated, mature, grown women with families. They could have handled this situation much better. And Wendy also called that woman a crackhead. So, you know, they both owe each other an apology. And I agree with Wendy when she says that NECA has skipped 20 million steps. You could have started with the, the apology. That's how it should have started. Not you're invited to come over to my house for this unpacking party. Wendy tells her that her existence is inconsequential to her happiness. So in other words, you are a nine mother factor, bitch. Evelyn said that, not me. Anyway, I just think that they should leave it alone. Either sit down, the two of you, work it out like grown women, or just let it go because it's getting to be just a bit too much and this is dragging out too long and we are 11 episodes in. It's almost time for the finale and this is what we're doing. We're still talking about this. Let this go. Anyway, peeps, get down in the comments and let me know what you think. And until next time, bye.